Even though a couple of years ago, the Russia-Ukraine war showed the importance of drone, the recent way Indian Defense Forces used the drone technology actually showed the entire world raising a lot of questions about are the conventional weapons when it comes to war, are they losing their effectiveness? However, we are at one workshop in Chennai where these drones, there are scouts, hawks and eagles over here which were used in Operation Sindur successfully to actually combat the enemy by providing surveillance and these are drones that are being produced in Chennai as well. We have the founder of the company, Zupa Sai uh, Venkatesh, thank you so much for speaking okay. to us. A commendable job with what you have done over here and I can see your workshop that is uh, very busy as well. So how did Zupa play a role when it comes to Operation Sindur? So these, so we have uh, been uh, producing as well as rolling out these drones, which are cyber secure and the electronics have been completely made by us uh, over the last four to five years. We have been working with the defense forces from 2023 to roll out what we call as a uh, ultra portable surveillance platform, which is uh, what we call a scout and hawk in our terminology. We have supplied over 150 units uh, till now to various army commands and brigades all over India. They have been primarily, in Ops Sindur, it has been primarily used as an over the hill surveillance tool where it has not been, uh, it has not crossed the LOC per se, it has uh, been within our side of the LOC, but it has been able to look peer close to about a kilometer, two kilometers inside visually uh, to see, you know, if mortars are being set up, if uh, there is a LOC intrusion which is happening if there is uh, some type of artillery fire uh, station which is being set up or LMGs, NIGEVs, any kind of troop movement on the enemy side. That is what this has been primarily. So, you are saying that when AVACs are there for giving early warning about uh, air attack, your drones were actually giving for early, early warning, warning for, for the ground, ground attack. attack. Yes, okay. ground uh, attacks and the role, you know, as what the uh, forces call it is called over the hill surveillance. So, basically, you know, uh, you stay uh, at a vantage point around one and a half to two kilometers away from the LOC. You send the drone and hover in and around uh, the line of control actually. And you peer about a kilometer, two kilometers from an altitude of 200, 300 meters inside the it's enemy. It's very territory. important actually. Yes, to go it's, it's, it's extremely important for increasing the situational awareness exactly. of the uh, forces. It's actually a force multiplier because it gives a bird's eye view perspective of the battlefield and uh, more importantly it does not put any person's life per se at risk and that's one of the other things that are very unique about our drones is because they, the entire stack that is the electronics software stacks have been built in-house uh, they have been cyber secure rated and uh, they are compliant to a standard called OW, OWASP 4.0 which ensures that under battlefield conditions, they cannot be hacked. Oh, okay. Huh. So, it, you know, it, it is counterintuitive if suppose we send a drone from our side and our enemy is able to uh, obtain our, the, you know, the base location as well as peer into our feed, then there is no point of, you know, having a drone uh, actually going. So, that is one of the reasons where we have stepped in and we have been working with the defense and the defense recognizes us for that very unique ability of us. But how did he achieve it? Because even when it came to Russia and Ukraine, uh, it was such a big trouble for them that they had to use optical fibers and actually reduce their uh, uh, coverage distance as well. But how did you achieve this actually? So, so there are two aspects to it. One is of course, cyber security that we always, you know, are, uh, we have been uh, we have certain protocols, non-standard signatures, non-standard communication uh, languages by which the drone cannot be uh, commandeered or taken over. Now on the second aspect, uh, what you are referring to is called electronic warfare from their side. They jam the GPS signals yes. and yes, that was a problem, even our drones face those problems. But uh, we are now coming out and we have certain solutions which we had developed a few years back like uh, one of our, you know, patented technologies, another technology which is called VINAV, Visual Inertial Navigation. So, it can, it basically looks down, there is a camera if you see here, which uh, points down uh -huh. and it takes a snapshot of the ground. It compares that with an already preloaded image of a map and it uh, correlates to estimate its location. So, even without the presence of a GPS, it, uh, it would be able to at least estimate where its current position is. So, those are few of the 
uh, uh, you know unique technologies that we have incorporated in this to give it the ability to operate in GPS degraded as well as highly uh, uh, EW contested and You are saying that these uh, kind of uh, technology has been inserted in it for Correct. it to take its own decision. Yes, for it to able it take its own decision. So take its own decision is one aspect. Huh. The second aspect being that um, see uh, most of the situation that uh, arises in a conflict uh, scenario, um, especially in today's you know a conflict where everything is electronic. You know, ev yes, everything yes. is electronic warfare. The first thing that is targeted normally is the uh, GPS or the global positioning system, such that drones, phones, cars, machines, nothing can understand where it is or get its location. Now, for a drone, that becomes all the more important because it's a flying object. So it's not that if I switch off the motors, I would stay there. If I switch off the motors, I would fall. <laughs> so. If I suppose lose GPS in between, how do I know where I am? So this is a very big, it's a very big challenging question and uh, those are some solutions that now we are working towards with the Indian Army uh, and the defences where we are looking at alternate navigation solutions and providing them with such uh, capabilities. We are one of the only companies in India who can do it because we have built our entire navigation stack from bottom up. Including the chip, right? Including the chip. So, yeah, including huh. the chipsets, huh. you know, like, um, you know, this this is a very unique technology. Even the architecture within the chipset huh. has been pioneered by us. Uh, see, when we started way back in 2013, uh, uh, a flight control system or a navigation chipset faces two unique problems. It has to be fast to respond to basically a hurdles. A hurdle. But at the same time, it has to also have its intelligence to figure out, uh, you know, to crunch the data and figure out where it has to go. The next solution. The next solution. So, there are two very contrasting processes. One has to be fast, one has to be thought out. So, we, uh, we tried a lot of solutions, huh. but uh, finally we took inspiration from the human mind, huh. uh, where we, if you look at our human control system, we are able to respond in a reflex action that is a quick uh, action as well as we are able to perform thought out uh, actions and uh, essentially our architecture um, mimics the human control system in an electronic format okay. similar to an AI. A and left robe and a right lobe. Yeah, a left robe and a right lobe. You know, just to give an example how it works is that uh, you know like uh, it actually that's how we were we discovered this technology it just so happened that one day i was going in my bike i had a bike uh, around 2015 or so i was going from home to office and uh, like in our regular you know in the roads. indian roads there was a cow which came in between so i had to immediately swerve and i moved my bike a little left but somehow that day i observed my brain saying that what is our human control system doing how is it able to, you know, if you, if you observe your brain, you can maybe try it next day. When you take a quick action like countering a pedestrian or avoiding an object, if you observe your brain, you are still able to think about higher operations. You know, I go ahead, where do I take a left turn? There might be more traffic on that route. I have to take this route to avoid traffic. To reach the target. To reach the target. Huh. So, I am able to do all this while simultaneously I am able to still avoid the yeah. immediate object in my vicinity. So, we saw that you know the brain you know is divided into two parts which is your left lobe which is your reflex action and right lobe which is a thought out action. So, uh, we mapped it out one is serial, one is parallel and other things. But ultimately what did we do? We took inspiration from this reflex and thought out action and made the reflex core and the thought out core. Huh. So, it is this basically is the inspiration from the human mind and the way the human control system works. And we call this system a very complex term which is disseminated parallel control computing for real time environments. If I have to simplify it, should I call it as an artificial intelligence? Yeah, you could uh, call it as an AI. And we have uh, two, uh, one international patent and two Indian patents also. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the Indian patents are already granted also. So, <laughs> it's like first world war as the yeah. enemy, I mean uh, once a plane became like flyable, they brought another weapon. So, they had to modernize the planes. Correct. 
that's so that we have come to fifth generation correct so we are expecting that kind of development with the drones now correct and see drone is one of those technologies which uh, what we call it as asymmetric warfare so asymmetric meaning see uh, in world war 1 uh, horses were used yes then from horses it progressed to tanks tanks was you know were extremely enormously more expensive and considerably more expensive than a horse so cavalry to tank uh, uh. cavalry to tank and similarly then if you look at it in the aviation space you had prop to jet yes correct turbine so pro at a prop to a jet engine a propeller driven aircraft was far cheaper and the jet aircraft was far more expensive yes. then from jet it became missiles icbms yes intercontinental uh, intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missiles, missiles which were far more expensive than jets this is the first time that an evolution of a new technology has reduced the price so what is the equivalent like for example a drone of this size strapped with say a 500 gram payload can you have you seen it in russia ukraine it can take down a 6 crore tank yes yes so that means something that is costing me less than 1000 dollars is able to wipe out a million dollar equipment so it becomes asymmetric there is no more symmetry between the cost the cost curve yeah. is falling see, down see always yeah. yeah so before this how do you take out a tank previous to this it was using an atgm yes anti tank guided missile which was maybe about 2 crores and the tank was about 6 crores you yes. know in cost i'm yes. talking about our indian uh, bmp2 and other things today it's come down to a level where a 1000 dollar fpv drone is able to take out a 6 crore tank so just dropping a shell on top just dropping a shell on top of so it's become asymmetric so also the solutions to counter drones have to become asymmetric so today the indian armed forces are uh, are uh, um, you know pursuing things like scattered bullets you know one of the most successful uh, anti drone systems and counter drone measures in ops indo was a world war 2 weapon which uh, was called the l70 <laughs> and today uh, yes while uh, some of the uh, counter drone electronic measures are being taken there is now a rapid development of shells and bullets for l70 which can scatter over a large just like a shotgun yeah, uh, like a shotgun yeah. so they are now creating timed fuse bullets where they launch the bullet and uh, it, after a certain time and distance it will just scatter Burst. so that you know you can range your target on radar and immediately go hit so they are look so so that means a 1000 dollar drone being taken out by say a 100 dollar bullet uh. so so it is it is like this so solutions also to take out drones as i say need to be asymmetric to the drones cost itself which so, means like we are going to uh, go ahead and create drones that will become stealth correct just like aircraft so and it's happening so there is like if you look at the amca program of uh, yeah, amca uh, uh, drdo it is aimed to achieve something like that so yeah your, your drone played a very important role because imagine uh, surveilling a place that is 1 km inside an enemy territory that to crossing over a mountain it's going to take at least 3 hours and considering the climate and correct, such, it's correct. like very difficult correct. and you were able to achieve it in 10 minutes maximum yeah, 10, over there uh, our total flight time was around 20 minutes 20 minutes there, and then the only thing you had to compete over there is the jammers jammers so that's where i would say also we had our learnings so i uh, i can very openly say you know we also did have some losses from our side but it was a learning see from our experience valuable learning valuable learning because as companies in india we rarely see you know our stuff being deployed in combat situations yes so we came to understand oh, okay so that means we need to incorporate certain things in this even though it might be low cost it needs to have basic ew features uh -huh. to be able to avoid so one of the ew features that we immediately gave as a solution huh. to the users was because our drones have a unique you know property which with high rpm motors which enable them to fly Withstand. at heights hmm. we told them you immediately take it to 1.2 km so the moment they took it over to 1.2 km they avoided the jam jammers huh. uh, at that altitude hmm. but the learning took a loss of maybe a drone or so <laughs> that's a, <laughs> them, i yeah. mean very less spent to learn yeah, a lot yeah learn, learn a lot and was it true. used in the other side of the border for okay. any kind of surveillance purpose or uh, did you achieve anything so we it? have not as such got any information on that and i don't think they will also tell us but from my uh, what i understood it might have been 
is what and how how happy is uh, indian defense forces using your so uh, hawk they are they the hawk in fact has impressed them quite a bit because uh, hawk as a platform has pl uh, uh, has performed in kanyakumari gangtok tenga bikaner patan kot baklo so the entire north south east west it has performed in all geographies elevations up to 3500 meters and uh, temperatures up to 50 degrees celsius oh, okay so they are very happy and the uh, other thing is compared to the other products which are there in the market ours is more economical and more than the economy it's the fastest to deploy on the field so it takes less than 2 minutes to set up and deploy a hawk less than 2 minutes yes i thank you so much for speaking to us if if yeah. i if i press this button will i be like can i see myself in the screen yeah ah, here so this is what is happening over here now re remember these are designs that have been made i'm just come back you see over there and uh, the thing i want to show you over there is like see how a screen it has a point for the mark target and then you have the range from there if i need to show this particular uh, this is the actual machine over here it's not going to be beautiful it's not going to be beautiful because it's a modular design if something happens they have to immediately repair the parts on the ground so it's made in such a manner that immediately the kind of be the propeller be the arm or the be the covering shell everything has to be done within like seconds because each and every second is very precious when it comes to war and that is why it has been designed in this manner and it has helped in by providing surveillance remember climbing over a hill for 1 hour to go into an enemy territory during a period of attack or war zone is like definitely there will be like unfortunate loss of life or any kind of issues and from there this just to surveil that area but this hawk drone was able to do that from an altitude of 1.5 kilometers giving the latitude and the longitude of that particular area if they are going to place any mortar shells over there for the attack or a kind of howitzer or something everything was given this so this machine was used this drone was used as an early warning system during operation sindur for any kind of ground attack and it has definitely played a very important role along with this company zupa over here and they have done a commendable job the nation thanks you thank you so much for having here with daniel pramod madhav for you today If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe